welcome back working on more cars even though i said i hate it that just automatically i guess it's magnetized to that and uh the market right now for motorcycles atv stuff like that is pretty scarce because everybody is asking way too much for garbage so we're gonna try our hand in some vehicles i guess so today i'm working on a subaru legacy that i got it was mentioned in a previous video um and i'm doing a transmission flush and filter change so um basically you take the transmission filter off drain the transmission and measure however much came out of it and then put that same amount back in we're going to start with i think i got five quarts i think the whole thing the whole system takes about 9.6 but it doesn't always drain it never drains completely unless you pressurize it and push it all out and then you gotta disconnect and get everything out of where the torque converter is and so i'm just gonna do a drain and a filter change because this one still has the filter from the factory and it's having some bogging issues in a low idle and i can't seem to find the issue with that um, i've looked at a lot of different videos and a lot of the videos say you know check your um, there's a PCV valve that's brand new all the hosing on the engine is pretty much I mean it's rubber it's not brittle so that's good I checked all the piping intercooler piping all the seals are good on that the only thing I could think of is maybe the intercoolers cracked but with the condition of the engine I don't really think that that's it um, so we're gonna try to do a transmission flush because my thought is is if it's never been flushed it's got hundred and thirty thousand miles on it maybe it's just putting idle tension a little too much idle resistance whenever it's in gear because if it it's in neutral it idles fine um just sitting there but as soon as you put it in gear then it starts to bog down and it almost stalls completely out it hasn't stalled on me yet um, checked all the spark plugs most of the spark plugs that were in this car were actually just hand tightened so that could also be a contributing factor so basically what i'm doing is i'm systematically eliminating all of the potential issues and today we're doing a transmission flush let me show you where i'm at so this is a 2006 subaru legacy gt there's not very many videos on this but there's a ton of videos on youtube about the 2.5 liter which this is the 2.5 liter ej25 i think i'm not a super guy so quickly becoming one um transmission does have a drain bolt transmission dipstick is right there we've removed the intercooler because i was checking a couple other things like the intercooler piping and then your pcv valve is actually down there and it's brand spanking new and it rattles so that's not it it's got to have a rattle to it otherwise sometimes the valve won't ventilate and it'll cause stalling issues so new timing belt at 130,000, which is cool and does not overheat surprisingly yet anyways bought it from a kid who drove it drove it like it was a freaking race car typically and um that is where your transmission filter is. So in order to get to your transmission filter, you have to remove the battery and the plate and um, the front headlight. And in order to get the front headlight out, there's a bracket right here. And in order to get that bracket out, you have to disconnect the front bumper. So it is a total pain in the ass. This one, thankfully, wasn't even bolted in. So I'll be replacing a couple of those bolts. He actually zip tied it on. And um, what you do is you get in here and there's two mount bolts right here. You just disconnect your transmission mount, transmission filter mount. These hoses go into the cooler and try to pull it out through there. That way you don't get shit all over the inner fender liner if it'll come out. I don't know if it's going to. Yeah, it doesn't really look like it fits through there. It might, with a little bit of incentive. Might have to bend that mount back and try not to step on my plastic inserts. I'm gonna get that out of there and then we will check back. All right, we got it out. It's kind of flimsy right there, so you can just pull it out the bottom. We got it here 
Um, uh oh. Let's see. What I probably should do is get a pan and put it right here and take that off. All right, what I did is I just got a jug, created a catch, put this down in there. Oh, my goodness. Oh, man. That thing's gonna need some incentive. Yeah? Oh my goodness. Huh? That's crazy. So what I did, what I did was I took a screw and I scratched the month and the year in that filter. So if this car makes it through to the next owner, they'll know the last time that was replaced. So now that we got the filter replaced and mounted back in there, we want to put the headlight back in and put all this shit back together. Okay, next thing you're going to want to do is get yourself a uh, catch pan that is relatively large, can hold quite a bit. Clean it out the best you can, and that way you're not putting it back in the car so it doesn't have to be perfect. It just, you don't want a bunch of other shit in there because you have to measure what you take out. So, we're going to use this, and we're going to slide underneath the car, and at that point, we will drain the transmission. container there empty oil container we'll start with that and see how far we get it should be four liters right up to here Right, right at four liters. 
Okay, we got our funnel in there, nice and cleaned out. No other fluids. Um, conversion four liters to quarts is about four quart, four point two two five quarts. So we're gonna do four, and then we will. Well, we'll do three and a half, and then we'll get it off of the stands and let it warm up and level, and then check the check the level and then top it off. All right, well, it still has a pretty low idle. Um, I'd like to see it a little bit higher. Still wants to try to stall out whenever I put it in gear. Not so bad now. I don't know, it's only been one, sec one, one trip around the block, so we'll see if it stays like this. If so then that should be fine just as long as it doesn't dip below like and before it was when it went into gear it was dipping way below that one and that's still pretty low if you can hear it I don't know if you can but I don't know still feels relatively low but we'll see if it stalls out i'll drive it again start driving it again and then uh we got some egr work to do on the truck and then i got another subaru that i'm i might actually start driving instead of this one but anyways yeah we'll check the level now that it's warm and make sure that it's in between the hot fill lines and then we'll be complete transmission fluid change and filter completion. Okay, so after you have got it up to operating temperature and it's sitting on level ground, with the vehicle running, you wanna check the fluid level. So on here you'll see two sets of lines and it does mark it on the dipstick. Not sure if you can see that, but you want to be at your top fill line when hot and top fill line when cold. So now that it's hot, we're going to set it at this level right here.
So you can see on here, we're at the low point. We need to be at the high point. So I'm gonna get the funnel and put in that 0.22 and it should be good. Okay, go tell Hanky I'm done. He better be washed. And then you need to get in. All right, we, re we topped off the fluid and it should be where it's at. So that's how you change the automatic transmission fluid on the Subaru. Um, that was the 2005 Subaru Legacy GT, probably the same for that model 2.5 liter engine in that year range. Um, but hopefully that does the trick. Thanks for watching. See you later, bye. bye. And as always, like, subscribe, tell your friends. Thanks.